All right, sweet. Okay, let's put my captions here. Good deal. All right, so once you've completed this warm up, the idea behind the warm up is that by breaking a character down into its like smallest parts, its most constituents parts, you get an idea of what kind of story that you're trying to tell with this character, what kind of role they play in the world that you're creating and the narrative that you're creating, all things like that. You'll notice that a lot of my assignments, a lot of the things related to this class are all about like storytelling, about how things interact with one another, how stories are communicated, and that's a big chunk of what graphic arts are about. This digital art kind of realm, you're always going to have some kind of message. And even things that aren't obvious or blatant, like what your characters are saying, the way that your characters exist is going to tell a story in their own right. Now, if you're trying to communicate that idea of the character and you're struggling to draw it, or maybe just the uh, drawings aren't quite translating the idea the way that you want them to, there is a technique known as photo bashing, where you take a lot of different pictures together and you make a uh, composition. So you take your pictures and compose them into something new uh, with Photoshop. And um, there's techniques that you can use to do that here, which I'll demonstrate uh, shortly. But the idea with photo bashing is before you start actually doing the action, you need to have an idea of where you're headed, kind of like a roadmap, in order for the uh, ultimate end goal to make sense. So if we look at um, this from a concept art perspective, is kind of the main idea that you're going to be using this technique for. In the thread, oops, that's supposed to say Tuesday. I will update that. Um, in the thread, I've posted a bunch of different resources two on photo bashing, one that defines concept art, and then three interviews with concept artists talking about their process and how they might use a, um, an idea or a skill uh, like this in order to create their uh, final product. So if we look at what concept art actually is defined by this, um, this NFI, right? All of these are videos that are gonna, uh, they don't load for me for some reason, but if you check this out, it will have um, a lot more displays, a lot more examples of what I'm actually thinking of concept art as if you want to go into this direction in the future. Um, but this is kind of the idea with photo bashing, is combining a lot of different resources, a lot of different aspects together in order to create a scene that tells some kind of story or proves some kind of concept. We won't go this advanced because this is quite a bit of work and quite a bit more time um, than we have for class, but you can see the end result and what it might look like um, at the end of it here. So in order to do this, we need to first kind of come up with a uh, character. I have not done yet, so we will do right off the top. So my character's main kind of traits are gonna be that they are an explorer, um, I don't know exactly what type yet, but we'll find out along the way. They are, they have some fear, some anxieties, has some fears and anxieties. And we'll go for three, I get it. And they um, always have the right tool for the job. Just right off the top, they don't really have to make, you know, you don't have to have a uh, goal. You can just kind of brainstorm and go with the idea that you like the most, right, tool for the job. So what I'm thinking, though, as I'm typing these out, as I'm kind of just letting the ideas flow, not really trying to criticize them or uh, really understand how they work together yet, I'm just kind of getting ideas out, and now I can explore some key ideas of these uh, pieces that I can add to my photo batching. So in being an explorer, I can uh, go from general to specific and think about like what kind of terrain do they explore? Do they explore like other planets? Do they explore our planet? You know, are they good at it? Are they bad at it? Right? These are kind of questions that are going to lead me to get the pieces that I need in order for the photo bash to be complete. So because my character, just kind of off the dome, I've decided has some fear and anxiety. They're not a total fearless, like, Chad of an explorer. Because of that, they're going to be, they're going to want to be more prepared. And because they're going to want to be more prepared, they're probably going to have a tendency to overpack, 
or bring things that aren't necessary. All right. And so that is also going to influence how I'm going to build out my character with these photos, right? If they're going on a walk to the store, they probably don't need 10 pairs of pants and three extra shoes, right? But because they have that fear and anxiety, they're likely to bring maybe a little bit more than they require. But since that they have, um, this is one of their more positive traits that I'm just finding as I'm kind of exploring this idea here. Um, they're always going to have the right tool for the job. Depends on, uh, you know, that's a result of overpacking. And um, anxiety, anxiety is multiple. And, but then I have to decide what is that tool I can type. That's important to the story I'm trying to tell. Important to the story. So I'm going to decide that my explorer explores other planets. So space explorer. I can add a few extra tools, but because they're a space explorer, that's going to influence more ways that I choose uh, photos to bash together. Um, and the right tool that they always have for the job, because it could create an interesting story opportunity, is going to be a ballpoint pen. Right? It's not your typical tool. It's a lot of jobs could work for it. But because they have the right tool, as I've decided here, just kind of breaking down how my character works or how my character might exist, um, in the space that I'm creating, I can find a creative way to use that ballpoint pen when it is the right tool for the job. And it might not be the job that you're uh, anticipating. So I've summarized some traits here, whether those are physical or uh, mental, more hidden, uh, or more, sorry, not more hidden, less obvious. Now I can start thinking about what kind of pictures I can gather to combine into this conceptual idea that I can draw later or that I can share to an artist so they have an idea of what I'm going for. So let's start with Space Explorer. I'm just gonna start randomly gathering. You know, if you want, I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm gonna make a folder to just kind of dump all of my pictures into. So I'm going to my OneDrive, Graphic Arts. This is Photobash. All right, and then inside of Photobash is where I'm just gonna start saving a bunch of pictures that we're gonna combine here in a second. So I'm gonna need a space helmet, obviously. And if I can't find just a good space helmet that I'm liking, I can also just get a picture of an astronaut so that I have some options here. Let's see. Uh, I like this one, so I'm just going to right click on that and go open image in a new tab so that I get this JPEG and then save image as into that photo bash file or photo bash folder. So third SGA photo bash, and then I'm just going to call this space helmet. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm calling mine space helmet. All right, let's see what else I can work with. I'm probably going to need uh, an oxygen tank of some kind. It does not have to be an astronaut's oxygen tank. You could use something like a scuba tank because we're just trying to communicate the idea of space explorer. This is where the photo bashing idea of using different options, different things you wouldn't typically try, can come together to create the idea that you're trying to sell. So let's just take this. It's a little nondescript. Let's see. Let's just go scuba gear instead. See if I can get something a little bit more interesting, visually interesting. I kind of like these tubes. That makes a cool effect uh, that I can put on the outside of my, um, my space helmet. And while you're doing this, with this concept, you also want to look for pieces that you like because you don't have to take the whole thing with the power of Photoshop and with um, digital editing. So I'm going to take this because I like the um, the tube situation going on on the scuba tank. So open images in a new tab, save image as, as long as it's in the photo bash folder, we'll call this scuba tubes or something. I don't know. So that's kind of, those are the things I'm thinking about are going to communicate that my character is a space explorer because they're human and they need air. So if we look back at these traits, if they're an explorer and they overpack, they need a place to actually put that stuff into. So if I Google just backpack, it's going to give me a lot of different options, whether that's a school backpack or something more specific to exploring, like a hiking backpack. And while I'm doing this, I want you guys kind of thinking about what you're going to add to your character or what character you would like to try and uh, create. 
so that you can assemble these pieces uh, in your photo bash. I like the look of this one that I can work with because I like the um, kind of the technicality of some of the extra functions. I think my character who tends to overpack is going to enjoy that. So right click image in a new tab, save image as backpack one because I don't know how many I'm going to need backpack one. All right. Let's see what other kind of good backpack options. You can look up something if I know my character is going to be an overpacker. There's something called doomsday prepping, right? Where they people get way too much stuff, uh, way more than they need. Oops, this is Amazon. So if we, you know, my character is going to be prepared, that's too low quality. You want to look for a nice crisp image. I like the look of this one. So open, uh, not link in a new tab, sorry. Image in a new tab, save image as, let me backpack two. Okay. I really don't have a goal in mind besides the ideas of the traits that I'm going to use uh, to create my character's photo bash. And they need a background as well. So I think we'll put them on the moon, something like moon landscape. Really communicate the fact that we're exploring because the earth uh, is not nearby. That's too small. Let's go larger. I will just do this one. Okay, image in a new tab. And we're gonna save this. Moon one. All right. If we take a look at my folder and look at the uh, examples, we're starting to gather some pieces of what my character is working with. I think of a couple other tools that my character might want to use. So I would think uh, camping tools. Here's a nice spread of images that you can cut out because you can think of these like collaging is kind of the idea with photo bashing is we have a lot of different pieces that we can use here. So I'll take this kind of camping spread here. Maybe they want to play a game of Uno on the moon. Who knows? Save image as, let's call this tools. Oh, sorry. Save image as tools one. All right, we're just kind of gathering some pieces, kind of foraging for ideas that our character is going to use. All right, they probably need some kind of blade to get them through the thicker forests. That's a little small. Okay. And something to eat with, obviously. It's a little small, but it's fine. Call it tools two. I'm getting a nice collection, a nice assortment of images here. I'm just going to get a um, human body diagram. Simple because I don't want all the anatomy. I just want something to kind of put together. Oh, that's going to be all anatomical. Let's Google human. There's really no right way to do this. Okay. Let's go not this. I don't know. Person. How about that? Okay, perfect. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Just kind of an outline that I can work with that I can build a character on top of. So we open the image in a new tab, save image as person one. I keep hitting escape. Person one, save. There we go. Um, and then the last thing I need, I kind of just gathered some general ideas here, is that I need uh, my ballpoint pen to some extent. So let's see what kind of what kind of ballpoint pens we can work with. And then this is an idea that you can kind of get a draft of a character put together that you can draw later if you have a specific style or you want to um, improve upon it in a different way. It does not have to be digital exclusively. This is just an idea. It's a concept, create a draft, create an idea on paper. Um, with some of the available tools that you have here. So let's look for, I don't know, I'm not looking for anything in particular. It's kind of a cool looking pen. I kind of like the look of this gold one. So we'll go open image in a new tab, save image as pen one. You guys get the idea. All right, so now I have, with my character in mind, collected a huge variety of pieces that we're going to connect together in order to create this character or the idea of this character. And we're going to do that with Photoshop. So if we open up Photoshop, slowly but surely, 
Making sure we're recording. Okay, good. That would have been embarrassing. Okay. Yes, I see some of the PCs are really, really thinking about it. Yeah. All right. So in Photoshop, we have the start screen similar to when we were talking about the uh, the GIF images. I'm just going to create a new file. It's going to pop open this window, new document window. I'm just going to go to photo and use the default Photoshop size of seven by five inches. And I'm just going to click create. We'll save it here in just a second. OK, so first thing you want to do is file save as. And we're going to put that into our uh, folder for photo bashing. So if I go to semester one, SGA, photo bash, we're just going to call this photo bash one, something like that. So we have an idea of um, what it could look like or how it's going to save in the future. OK, so we've got all of our images in this folder. Now we need to start getting them onto the page, getting them into the uh, the vibe of the scene that we're trying to create here using Photoshop. So I'm going to start with my background. There's two ways you can do this. From your file explorer, the window that contains your files, you can click and drag. And when you do that, it's going to think for a second. Hopefully. There it goes. It's going to place that image in your canvas so that you can work with it here. Photoshop, it's going to scale. It's OK if it's blurry, because some of these pictures are not always going to be uh, the highest quality. But I want to scale that up so that my background takes up a majority um, of my page here, like this. And then I'm going to hit Enter. So now I'm kind of building my scene. Here we have the background that my character is going to exist in. But if I were to try and drag my person into here as a new layer, it's got this really ugly white background that's not very good for what I want to do. So in order to get rid of that white background, we're going to do something in Photoshop called masking. Masking is just a way, instead of deleting the pixels entirely, since Photoshop is working with these pixels, it's a way to hide them. So in case you ever need to bring them back later, for whatever reason, the data is still there as compared to gone forever. So to do this quickly, since Photoshop, the way that it works and the way that it has worked for a long time, is it looks for contrast and differences. There's a pretty hard contrast between the white background and between the black outline of my character's silhouette here. So if you click and hold on this fourth tool option down here, should be, uh, let me see, you wouldn't love P. There we go. It's going to look like a little paintbrush with a little dotted line. If you click and hold on that, there is a magic wand tool. It's the third option in Photoshop. If you click on that, the magic wand tool is going to try to select uh, giving its best guess to whatever you click on. So since Photoshop is a layer-based app, person one is the only set of data on this layer. So it's not, even though that moon and background are here, the magic wand tool will not be able to see that since it's on a separate layer. So if I click on my white background, you're going to see, it's kind of hard to see on the projector, um, but you see that there's kind of this dotted cut line around the outside and it's moving. It's kind of gently scooting forward. This is called, it's the literal name is called the line of marching ants because that's what it looks like, right? The ants are all on patrol here. So with this white space selected, like I've done uh, with the magic wand tool, what I can do now, if I press backspace, let's click OK, hold on. Let's try delete. That's what I thought. All right, let me try something real quick. Unrasterize. There we go. All right, so Photoshop works with something called smart objects. If you are seeing this little um, paper, like gray square with like a little paper icon um, in the bottom, and your selection is not working, it's not removing what you needed to remove, you'll have to right click on that, uh, right click on the bar part, the right side of the name and the little thumbnail, the little picture. You want to click on rasterize layer. What rasterize layer is going to do is convert it from a smart object into what's called a raster which just means it's a uh, diagram of pixels. And if I press backspace, those pixels are gone forever, which is cool. But maybe I don't necessarily want those pixels to be gone forever. So I'm going to Control Z to undo that. It's back to a smart object. You can click on this button right here, the rectangle with the circle on it. That's going to create a mask. So what a mask does, you can see that there's a big black uh, space filled out on the entirety of the page. And there's a little bit of white space in here in the middle. And you can see that it's become see-through, right? You can look through the character based on the selection, and you can see the background behind it. 
we don't want the uh, outline of the character invisible. We want everything else invisible. So what we need to do is swap the mask by inverting it. So you can see that in Photoshop, there's a big section of black and a small section of white. Keep in mind the way that you remember what color does what is that black conceals and white reveals. You can also think of it like a white window on a black background. You're gonna be able to see what's white, what's in the window, and with the black background is going to be less visible. So if I hold control on my keyboard and press I, it's going to switch the white and the black values so that the only thing that's contained, uh, since this is all blacked out, you can see in the little black square in the bottom there, this is now going to, sorry, hold on, I moved the background. Now we just have the outline of my character, my person, my kind of like my little cutout here, um, contained here because we switched the white and the black values uh, on the mask. The reason you would want a mask instead of just deleting the uh, pixels entirely is because now you can take your brush tool, which is right here on the toolbar, or you can press B on your keyboard. The default Photoshop colors down here on the bottom are black and white. You can hit X to switch those. See, I'm hitting X on my keyboard and it's swapping between black and white. Whatever color you paint on the mask is going to follow the same rules of concealing and revealing. So if white reveals, if I take my paintbrush set to white with my mask layer selected, you see how the squares around the mask layer. If I start painting, even though this is white, um, white, it's a white background, so it's kind of a bad example, but you can see that it's just revealing those pixels that were previously hidden, right? That's the background data. It's just covered up by our black mask. So if I hit uh, X to switch to black, instead of actually making black paint, it just hides whatever layers underneath the mask. And I'm just dra dragging back and forth and clicking really frequently, just in case I need to, um, just in case I need to undo, so I don't have to, I don't lose all my uh, progress. But black reveal or conceals and white reveals. So if I were to paint black on this part, you're gonna see it's gonna start to conceal that information, but it's not gone. So I can just control Z a bunch to remove all those strokes that I just made. Um, in order for my mask to have a little bit more detail like this. Does that make sense? Biggest thing on that is white reveals and black conceals, and you want to use masks whenever possible. So I'm seeing when I zoom out, there's a little bit of a white edge here. I'm gonna take my brush tool. Uh, anytime your colors change, see mine's set to kind of blue and this kind of peach color, you can hit D on your keyboard, and that's gonna reset your colors back to the default of black and white. So since black conceals, oh, I'm painting on the wrong layer. Let's get rid of this. Make sure that you're on the mask. Get rid of this by painting black around the edge so that this white edge um, disappears a little bit. OK, so now you can start to see how our concept is coming together. I mean, ideally, I'm going fast. Um, usually, you'll spend a lot of time on this. But now we have a character in an environment that we can start adding some more detail to. So since I want to think about adding this helmet to my character, if I click and drag the helmet in, it's going to have the same problem where it's going to have the white background, but it's not going to, um, if I want to make the helmet see-through, it's not going to behave the way that I need it to. So let's give it a shot. Actually, let's make sure that it doesn't work first before we try the other method. You can see Space Helmet comes in as its own layer. I'm going to click on the white part of Space Helmet and then make a mask. And since the mask is going to only take what's selected, I need to invert that mask by holding Control and pressing I. So now you can see I've got more of a cutout, but I want to see my I want to be able to see my character's face through the helmet. So there's two ways we can do that. We can either take a brush set to uh, black to conceal this part of the helmet so that my character's face pokes through a little bit more, something like this. If you want to change your brush's settings, there's a little button right here underneath image in the top right. If you click on this, these are your brush settings. The amount of hardness is the amount of blur that the uh, brush is going to have from the center of the circle to the edge, right? The radius of this circle on my brush, the uh, hardness is how much that's going to blur. So if a hardness is set to zero, it's kind of backwards because it means 100% blur. So if you see when I was masking out, if I control Z a bunch, bring all that data back in. Oh, too far. There we go. Okay. Um, just click OK. 
If I set this to 100% hardness, that means 0% blur. So when I click right here, it's going to have a hard edge. It's going to punch out exactly the uh, thing that I'm trying to mask out. It's like this. And I think I have my, hold on, I might have my, oh, my flow is not high. Enough. So make sure your flow is set to 100%. Um, see how that just makes it really hard cookie cut punch outs of my design here. Um, if you want a little bit more gradual change, you want it to look a little bit more realistic. Okay. You can change your brush hardness, set it to a lower value for more blur, and you can change the flow of your brush. Just reduce that from a hundred and that's going to make a more realistic kind of cloud kind of glass effect that I am looking for here. Right. So now my character has a helmet and they're hanging out in space. It's not perfect, right? So see, I'm missing some data here. I can take my brush tool set to white this time and you can use your bracket keys, which are right underneath plus and minus and by the backspace on your keyboard to make your brush larger or smaller. So right bracket makes it larger, left bracket makes it smaller. And since we have our color set to white and we have our space helmet selected, Right, make sure you have the space helmet layer with the mask enabled. If I click and drag with white, it's not doing what I need it to. Hold on. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, I had, okay, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. My brush was actually set to black. That's why it was revealing uh, more of the helmet. So I can paint with white on the space helmet layer to bring some of that data back in. And a lot of this is getting the general idea down and then brushing it in as you need it. So I see there's a little bit of white. I'm holding uh, Alt on my keyboard and scrolling to zoom in. It's a little bit of white pixels over here. If I want to go for perfection, I mean, you don't have to go for perfection, but I don't want this extra white space. I'm going to hit D on my keyboard. D on my... Okay. Weird. Okay, sorry, I meant X. Okay, X on my keyboard to switch to black. I'm going to paint with some black, just long strokes, like if you were actually using a paintbrush clicking and dragging a lot so that it has uh, gets rid of that edge right there. All right, so turn off my thing. Now I wanna get those hoses from the uh, scuba mask, but it's gonna be a real pain if I drag and drop this in. It's also much larger than I anticipated, okay? You'll notice every time I drag and drop something in, it adds it on top of the layers. Photoshop's a layer-based program like we did with the uh, animation. So it's all on top. Um, and it starts at the top and works its way down. So whatever's in front or what's ever on top is gonna to be in front of what's ever on the bottom. So what we could do is position this like this and then add a mask to it, even without making a selection. We can add a blank mask with the rectangle in the circle. And then I can take my brush tool, set to black, maybe a little bit larger. Um, why is that not working? Oh, I see. Okay, and it's just a black, black sky. Right, and I can erase the pieces that I don't want. Because it's on a separate layer, it's not gonna affect any of the layers underneath. But this is gonna take a while and it's not gonna look the way that I really want it to necessarily. So there's a better way to do this. Okay, I'm gonna control Z a bunch all the way back to when we put in this image and we're gonna get rid of it. What you can do is file open and then we're gonna open up that image and just take the scuba tubes or just take the piece that we need from another um, another source. It's gonna open it in a new tab like this. When you do this, you'll notice the background has a lock on it. So since Photoshop is what's called a destructive editor, it means when you edit the pixels outside of a mask, when you edit them, they are gone forever if you save. You can't go back and readjust if you delete pixels permanently. So the way to get around this is you hold Control on your keyboard and press J, Control J, oops. Control J is duplicate, and it's gonna create an exact copy of the background layer. But we leave that background layer and turn off this eyeball so that we have kind of a draft saved. We have a version of that data still inside of our um, Photoshop document. I don't wanna do that yet. Um, just in case we ever need to go back. Okay, so what you can do now, if you've uh, taken graphic design, you can use the pen tool to make a uh, pen path around the part that you're trying to keep, but if you have not taken graphic design, you can click and hold on that same magic wand tool. If you click and hold, you get expanded tool options. And we can take the quick selection tool. This is also a brush, but it has a little plus sign in it. 
And since Photoshop is looking for contrast, it's looking for large differences between the pixels, it sees that large difference between the black of the tube and the blue of the ocean. So if I click on the black part of this tube right in the middle here, it's going to make a little line of ants that's going to edge right there, but not make it all the way down to here because there's a contrasting line right there. And I'll wrap this up here in just a second. So what I'm going to do is click through these tubes, try to get a much, as much of them as possible. Right? There's a little bit of overlap. You saw my ants move their way down the, uh, the life vest. But I'm just going to click along the edge of the piece that I'm trying to keep. I don't want the goggles. I just want the tubes. And by using the quick selection tool, it's going to allow me to make my line of ants go around the edge here. But you'll notice that it's also included some of my guy's face, some of my guy's uh, life jacket, and a little bit of the water under here. You can hold Alt on your keyboard. So watch what happens when I hold Alt. The brush turns to a minus, and I can click and drag to push that line of ants. Think of it like a line that you're going to cut out, like back in uh, early school, right? This is cut along the dotted line. By holding Alt and pushing those ants, pushing that line back to the piece that I actually want to keep, and then letting go of Alt to uh, add more ants to it, minus or holding Alt will subtract ants from the selection, I can more refine the details that I want to keep. So since I don't want to um, totally delete these pixels or totally remove them from scuba tanks, right? I'm going to make a mask. And you can see it's kept just the piece that I want to keep. It's not perfect. But since I have a mask, you can see the shape, right? The white window on the black background. We're only revealing the scuba tube that I selected. What I can do now is take my brush tool if I want to refine this selection. Let's zoom in a little bit. See, we're missing some data here. So we're going to need to reveal that by setting it to white. OK, B on my keyboard, brush that back in, Alt to zoom out. Missing some data on the bottom here, brush that back in. Right, You can refine this mask as you need. For time purposes, I am not going to, uh, but you can on your own photo bashes. So now what I can do, because these are two tabs open in the same Photoshop window, is I can click and drag this over here, let go. And I can resize it so that it fits my character's vibe a little bit better here. And I can adjust as needed because it brings the mask with it. So I'm going to hit Enter. All right. Click on that layer. I'm going to rename it Tubes so that I know you double click on the name to or double click on the words to rename it. Since there's a mask, I can take my brush tool, set to black to conceal. I want to conceal this brush so that it looks like it goes behind the helmet instead of just sitting on top of it. And so by taking these different pieces of these images with a general idea in mind, we are executing the concept of photo bashing, making a collage of all these different pieces that create a scene of some kind that you can develop into a more detailed version later on. So like if I want to, let's do, let's see what else we got. Let's do the backpack and the pen because I don't have time to mask out all these tools. Um, this backpack is going to work a little bit better for my needs because it's a little bit more square. If I have a square silhouette, you want it to kind of fit as best as possible if you think about perspective. Okay, So I want it to fit as best as possible. I'm going to click and drag my backpack into here. Press and hold on my fourth tool, my objects uh, selection tool, and get the magic wand. Click on the white part. Make a mask by clicking on the rectangle with the circle. It's the wrong way around. Control I to invert it. It took the logo as well because the logo is different from the background. So I'm going to take my brush tool, set to black to conceal that, and just paint over the logo by clicking a bunch. You see how I move my mouse so that I'm kind of treating it like a paintbrush? Okay, it's a little bit of overlap here, so I'm going to undo a couple times. Make my brush a little bit smaller. X to set it to white. Bring some of that data back in. X to set it to black hide some of that data, right? It's a lot of refinement in this process. I see a little bit of white left down here. That might just be the moon. OK, so say my character's taking a rest. I want my backpack to be kind of a similar size to my character. And you'll notice that my backpack, uh, because the layer is in front of the person layer, it's in front of the, uh, the scene that we're composing here. So if I click and drag Backpack 2 to go underneath Person 1, you'll notice it appears like it's sitting next to person one and their hand is in front of it. Last thing I'll do is grab that ballpoint pen, 
copy that in. It's okay if these things are different sizes. You'll notice it's going to put it wherever my cursor was. So I'm going to bring pen one up to the top so that I can mask it out. Same process, magic wand tool, click on the white, click on the rectangle with the circle in it, control I to invert it, and then I'll refine, um, or I would refine if I had time from here on. So you notice I keep moving my background when I mean to move my canvas around and I mean to move my workspace around. You can uh, stop that from happening by clicking on the layer that keeps moving and this pressing this lock button right here. If I click the lock, I can no longer move that moon around and it will stay put. I kind of like the idea of my character's ballpoint pen being like really big. So I'm gonna keep that. I think that's fun. Um, have that be there, like as if they were holding it. Um, and I'm just changing the things around by like rotating or resizing uh, so that it has a nice visual component that fits a little bit better with my composition. So since I have this mask and I have a little bit of leftover data, same process, be on my keyboard to get the brush tool, set it to black so that I know it's concealing, B for brush, there we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna paint away using the black uh, color, paint away some of this extra background space. You can hear how often I'm clicking because I wanna have a lot of data that I can uh, undo just in case I ever need to go back. And I'm literally thinking about this like black paint that I'm creating uh, a scene using all these different pictures, right? It's not perfect, right? It's obviously pretty quickly done, but it does have all of the aspects of my character that I'm trying to communicate here. Sure, it doesn't have a lot of the fear and anxiety. Maybe it doesn't have the story that um, I'm quite looking for yet. But that's what photo bashing is for, is to create a draft that you can draw later on or continue to advance in the future. Does that make sense? All right. So what I want you guys to do is a similar process to what I've just shown you, where you come up with a few ideas, you collect a few pictures for those ideas, and then you try to photo bash them together into a concept like this in Photoshop. Does that make sense? OK. We'll have you turn those in at the end of the week, so you have some time to practice to get used to it. Uh, on Friday, I'll put the assignment up um, later. But we have about 25 minutes. You can collect your images, and then we can work on this again on Thursday. But does this make sense? You get the vibe? Get the idea? OK, perfect. The rest of the time is yours to work. Start by figuring out who your character is before you get the pictures. It makes the getting the pictures process a lot easier. And then you'll end up with a concept Something like this. All right? Okay. Go ahead and get to work.